Welcome to this session of Community Talk. My name is Tracy Biddle. I'm the Executive Director at Leonardo's Children's Museum, and I have with me today Jamie Smith, who is my Camp Director at Leonardo's Children's Museum. She runs Da Vinci Day Camp for me, and it is Da Vinci Day Camp season. It is, and I'm so excited to get everybody there and ready to go. Yes. It's starting in just a little over a week. I can't believe it. Oh, it seems like we were just trying to make, make up our mind, you know, know, about topics and all that. I know. But um, from what I've seen the topics have been a great hit. The teachers are doing a great job. They are. We have, I've hired 20 certified teachers to Excellent. take turns teaching this summer and they are all very excited. Good. Ex very excited. Good, good. And what an amazing um, option for you to have for your children. Um, summers can be long hard days sometimes mm -hmm. but if you can get them somewhere where their minds being stimulated all yes. day long under the supervision of a certified teacher with a pre-approved lesson plan right. in science and art. Um, mm -hmm. With my children it just kept them snapping and ready to go on to the next level of learning. I know I always say you know if you if you want to take your child someplace that's safe and where they can um, keep their mind going and they can do things that they don't always get to do in right. school, but they can do all those fun things outside of school. What a better place to go than Leonardo's. Yes. And um, when we do our summer camp, it's just an extension of Leonardo's. And then your kids get to come and they can spend half a day or a whole day. And then they can do all those things um, that they want to do in right. school, but they you know, they get that extra in the right. summer. And they're That's learning a good point. by having fun. Um, you know, we all try to do something with our families in the summer, right. but with our program, you can um, you enroll by the week mm -hmm. and so you can enroll and uh, work around um, family vacations yes. or family reunions or things like that. Yes. Um, the important thing is to get your child enrolled yes. and kind of plan out your your year enough to know about which weeks you're going to be in town so you can get your child spot. And another great thing about it is when you go on the website you can see exactly what themes are each week and exactly. then you can talk to your child, you can talk to your children, you can ask them what they're interested in mm -hmm. based on the themes and exactly. then you can sign them up um, based on what they're interested in and let's um, let's give the viewers just a little bit sure. of taste of that though um, we're going to start off with animals and ecosystems which uh -huh. is so fun since we have animals yes um, tell us a little bit about that week I think it's going to be a mixture of art and science mm -hmm. so your child can learn a little bit about animals and where they live but then also also tie in some art with it so mm -hmm. that they can do some um, art projects and some painting but then also some other art mediums with it mm -hmm. and then learn some art and science together right. while learning about animals and where they live. Yes, yes. And then the second week I'm really looking forward to, um, I think um, our community is aware that we have lost one of our founders, Dr. Owen K. Garriott, who was an amazing scientist yes. and he helped found, found our museum. So with that theme being scientists, studying mm -hmm. science and scientists, scientists and how they contribute. We're also, uh, we'll talk about Dr. Garriott yes. and how, well, how, what an it? tremendous effect he had on this whole world Absolutely. with um, his work and studies and so the second week with the, which is June 10th through 14th mm -hmm. we'll be studying scientists and especially our special scientist Dr. That's Garriott. Right. And you know I think one of the things that they're also going to look forward to is experiments and yes. in doing things that are messy and fun and mm -hmm. and explosive and mm -hmm. and things they don't even get to do at home maybe right. you know? and so kids are getting excited about that when and you do dress for some for camp yeah dress to make a mess <laughs> Absolutely, okay right so. <laughs> yes yes okay. absolutely going on into june um, we start the next after the scientists we have magical mythical creatures yes. tell me about that when I thought about that, some of the kids had expressed interest last summer, mm -hmm. um, wanting to learn about unicorns and fairies wow. and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, what a better way to do that and introduce that, you know, mm -hmm. in, in summer camp and just sure. talk about those things and, and to be able to bring it in in art and do mm -hmm. some, you know, fairy jars and talk mm -hmm. about, you know, bring it all in together and oh, tie I've it together. Oh, i some and fun camp. ideas. Yes. Fun, yeah, fun. It is going to be a lot of fun, I think. Okay, now towards the middle of summer, right at the end of June, we are going to do teacher's choice. And parents always say, what in the world? And I, I think we throw that in there um, every once in a while mm -hmm. because teachers always say, 
we never get to do this or this. And mm -hmm. I say, all right, here's your chance. Right. You pull out all the stops and teach whatever you want. You Art, get to see the teachers at their finest, man. I know. So much creativity and enthusiasm because it's kind of their deal and, and their and idea the that week. And the kids go, I can't yeah. believe we're doing this today. Yeah. It's really, yeah. it's really fun. It's <laughs> so really it is fun. a fun week. Then when we start out July, um, we will have camp um, the first week of July. There is a holiday though. So the day of July 4th, no we camp. will have no classes. Mm -hmm. However, the other days of the week, Absolutely. we will have classes. Just regular times and everything. It's going to be an art theme and it will be garden art. Yes. And my vision for that, when I talked to the teachers, my vision for that was bring in things that you can um, pull in from outside your garden mm -hmm. activities with art your garden activities that you can do together rock painting mm -hmm. things you can put outside in the garden mm -hmm. bring in um, making things with flowers you know yes. things you can do with you know even teaching them about um, you know how do you how do you do all of this how does mm -hmm. this work together and mm -hmm. and during spring break camp we made some planters yes. and we sent home flowers in the planters mm -hmm. I mean things like that you know yes so. yes yes I this I love that week I'm really looking forward yes. to seeing what what they get to take home then we will move on in July we will move on to beauty of the deep sea which this is, is always be, just a beautiful thing yes and the sea is amazing. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. are so many things we can pull out of that. Mm -hmm. There's so many things, beautiful things they can talk about and yes. learn about, paint about, yeah. the science that goes in it, you know. And studying the water in the summer, it just it yes. goes together. Absolutely. I agree. <laughs> totally agree. So, and then the seventh week, we will be having fun while staying safe, which is a new one I'm really excited about. Yes. And I mean, when you talk about our community helpers from you know, lifeguards to crossing guards, EMTs, police officers, mm -hmm. people that we can bring in from our community to, to talk to them at mm -hmm. some point during that week is going to be amazing. Yes. Giving them life skills that they're going to need to know yes. and then teaching them in the classroom, outside of the classroom. It, it's going to be a great week. Yeah, it really pulls up my heartstrings with my um, official graduate studies being in public health. Oh, I just think wow. yeah. that's going to be, that's just healthy for everyone. It is. It really is. <laughs> so, and then the very end of the summer, we will do music and more. And, and I can just already hear the noise coming from that education annex. We're going to be <laughs> playing music, making music, mm -hmm. building musical instruments. I have some special guests coming that play different types of instruments nice. that they may not have seen before. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be really fun. Oh. I just feel like um, the kids sometimes, those those arts get lost yes. sometimes. Yes, um, they do. And so if we can bring that back out mm -hmm. and enjoy those, it's mm -hmm. going to be a really fun time. Yes, and I just think tweaking the children's interests in Absolutely. any type of instrument or musical style Isn't or study. Gonna, yes. yeah, yeah, I think it'll be really fun. Um, camp is for our children age 4 to 12 years yes. old. Uh -huh. um, and so we usually group them up about, we try to do pre-K, K, and then first and second uh -huh. grade, and then third and up. Yes. Um, and then class size, we really try to control that. We do. We do. We keep them small mm -hmm. so that the teachers have a chance to teach and, and the kids have a chance to learn. We mm -hmm. also have apprentices who yes. help inside the classroom. They're just middle school students, age 13 to sometimes 16, mm -hmm. usually 15. Mm -hmm. But we keep them in there so that they can engage with the students also and yes. help the teacher. And then it becomes an even smaller, more intimate group. Right. And Lots um, of interaction absolutely. with each individual child. Absolutely. So. Yeah, it's really an amazing Time I mean, my them. child's 23, and she still sees her teacher in the community that she had back in the days where she was uh -huh. doing this, and that's significant to it her. It is. It they really developed is. a relationship. Yeah. So, okay. Um, depending on whether or not you are a member of Leonardo's, that helps with affordability always. Um, and so you can enroll by the week. Um, we don't do per day, no, but you will buy summer. when you come in. You schedule yourself, and your child has a position in that class for all yes. week. It varies a little bit from 195 to 175 for a full day all week and then of course if you just attend a half day that's mm -hmm. reduced from there we do still have one discount left I thought maybe we would talk about is if you um, enroll in the all, whole summer all camp eight weeks at the same time you can get a 25% discount mm -hmm. right so
So um, if you're making plans and things like that, sometimes that's more difficult to pay in that manner, and you'd rather you know not do that. But if you can, it'll get you a nice sure, discount absolutely. off the top. So um, one thing I thought we should bring up is mm -hmm. there's there's a little bit. Some people go to work. And right. they have to drop off early. Yes, um, good there point. Is, there is an opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. Classes start at 8.30. Mm -hmm. um, morning session ends at 11.30. And the afternoon session begins at 1.30 and ends at 4.30. But mm -hmm. if you're a, a parent who needs you know, to work and needs to be there, um, we do have an early drop off between mm -hmm. 7.30 and 7.45. Mm -hmm. And then if you need a late pickup between 5.15 and 5.30, it's mm -hmm. just a small extra, but mm -hmm. that's something that you can take advantage of if, if yes. need be. Yes. So sometimes parents say, you know, 8.30, I can't, you know, yeah. but you know you can always come yes. between 7.45 and 8.30, yes. but the early drop off is 7.30 to 4, 7.45 yes. and Good late point. pickup 5.15 to 5.30, but that's something you need to arrange when you pay mm -hmm. so that we know ahead of time to have that scheduled in yes. for you. So. And safety is our number one core value Absolutely. at the museum. Um, remember for drop off and pick up, um, we're not the kind of place that you pull up and you wait right. for the child to come out. You need a photo You need ID. to come inside and you need to bring your photo ID. That is, yes. I was a member of the important. board and I would come to get my children and I would not think of that every now and then and I would go back to my car and get it. Yeah. That's um, it's very not important. always convenient, but that is something we cannot Absolutely. take yes, any, cut any corners. That. For, that is so. very important. Whoever picks up your child needs to be on a list. Yeah. Um, it's on the back like that. of their form so that we know mm -hmm. um, who can pick up um, so that we can make that make that happen for them. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Oh, it just, I'm going to get excited now that I'm thinking about it. Um, the children just create such relationships with among themselves and the teachers. You briefly mentioned that we have apprentices. Camp could not go on without no, apprentice. No, absolutely not. Um, right now, today, I was watching some interviews going oh, on. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, apprentice is the, for the older children, ages 13 and to 16, approximately. And these are children that want to learn about having a job. Yes, and it's a great opportunity for them. Oh, They're, yes. You know, um, they go through a process and then each week we teach them different things that not me but the person mm -hmm. in charge mm -hmm. on Mondays during their lunchtime they right. get to do a meeting and they learn all these right. different things about having a job right right how to do a resume how to prepare for your interview mm -hmm. kind of job prep skills and yes, things absolutely. like that that's our return to them yeah. for helping um, them facilitate the teacher and the yes. classes and things yes. so it's just it's a great summer at Leonardo's camp is amazing and this is all just what's going on in the annex. We yeah. have an entire museum That's um, right. newly renovated. We are also re uh, renovating the outdoor I park. Know, I know. So if you anybody's uh, driving by the park and sees huge piles of product, um, we are putting that yes. underneath all of the equipment. That's going to be um, nice. Thank you so much to Leadership Greater Enid yes. who is funding that for us and we are making our program our um, outside play area even safer than it has so been wonderful. all this year. So so um, we're just really excited. This is our season. Yes. Um, thank you thank for being you for director me. all these years. Oh my goodness, it's been <laughs> wonderful. So the children know you and trust you, and that's very valuable. Um, so, um, and then remember, children will need to bring up a SAC lunch yep. each day, yes, and we will um, work with you. And and you need to get them pre-enrolled though. Yes, please. So, um, the sooner you enroll, the better. We do not have any classes that are full, but we have some that are just a couple of kids from being full. Awesome. So. All right. Thanks for helping me Thank share you. with our community about our amazing summer program. And that's all that we have for this session of Community Talk. I'm Tracy Biddle, and this is Jamie Smith. Have a good day. Hi, I'm Jennifer Kissling with Loaves and Fishes of Northwest Oklahoma. Watch for us on Community Talk. Hello. I'm Brenda with the Blue Star Mothers. I'm the president, and I have with me today Jolene Taylor, and she's our treasure. And we're going to share a few things with you. And here on Enid uh, Community Talk. So, Jolene, would you like to tell them when our meetings are? Our meetings are the <coughs> excuse me, the second Thursday of every month and we pack boxes on the fourth Thursday of every month at 6.30, both of them. And we are really packing our boxes on our business meeting because we only have three right now. So there's no sense coming in on the next fourth Thursday for boxes. Right, right. 
So until we get some more names, we just think it's not uh, worth having people drive because right. some of our moms drive a little bit of a distance to be with right. us. So, and uh, if you have a son or daughter that would like to, and you would like to be a part of us, please call or come by. We're there on Thursdays and Fridays from nine to, or 10 to five. Sometimes we're a little bit late because sometimes, you know, things just get in the way, right, Jolie? Yeah, I'm <laughs> late more than I am on time anymore, it seems like. Oh, well, I'm late a time or two also, but you know, uh, we, we just do the best we can. And uh, we've had a busy week. Yes, we have, very busy. So, we help out with the Wood Rain Wall of Honor, and we honor our fallen, and we also help out with the Red Dirt Run. So, you want to talk about the Red Dirt Run? Mm. We had to be out there at 54th and Southgate at 6.30 in the morning, and, you know, I had to get up at 5.30, which wasn't my favorite thing to do, <laughs> but... And my fur babies had me up at 5.30 the morning before, so I really wasn't. <laughs> but we went out and did that, and then uh, we had to be back out to Woodring the next day at 10, 9.30. Mm -hmm. And Richard Cox and I, we had to go to Old Mulgee to pick up a blue star, a gold star mother and bring her back. So. We did that on Sunday, and then we had to take her back on Monday. So this morning, I did not want to get out of that bed. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you didn't. That's a lot of miles, but, uh, you know, that just goes to show that sometimes, you know, as a Blue Star mother, we're not just here uh, packing care packages right. and just hanging out at the mall. You know, we, uh, we, we are involved in a lot of things. And when this Gold Star Mother that we wanted to honor, that has never been honored at our Woodring Park, we, uh, she was having trouble with her car, and so we decided that we can help her out. So um, the Blue Star Mothers was trying to figure out what to do, and we was having a meeting at uh, Brahms getting ready for all this, and Richard uh, volunteered to drive over there. So. And Jolene went to help support the Gold Star Mom, so they had a good ride for two days. Yeah, you know, and what made it all the best was when we got her home, how appreciative she was, mm -hmm. because she said she'd never been honored that well, and nobody had ever honored her son like we did. That's and right. And she was just as thrilled as could be. Yes. I believe it's an honor when you um, get word back that they're so happy and that we we acknowledged her son and made her such a part of our service that yeah. it really is special. Yeah. And so, they did have his name on the wall yes. where she got to see mm -hmm. it. Yes, and it's it's just one of those things that, you know, it's it's a sad situation, but yet we can turn it into a beautiful moment yeah. for them and their memories. So, and we also honored uh, Connor Levi Schaumber's family from Ringwood area, and uh, it was an honor to get to do that too. And I, I believe that, that his folks was just as honored as, as we was. So, so just always keep them in your prayers because no matter if it's been a year or it's been five years or however many years, it's really hard for our Gold Star families. We also honored a World War II right. veteran that they just returned his body and they were very appreciative mm -hmm. of that. I talked to them. Yes, and uh, <coughs> it, it was amazing that they was able to come and be such a part because his his uh, parents, of course, are gone and his siblings was all gone. So as all that he had left was this one nephew and uh, 
So it was an honor, and they was very, very kind, very yeah. uh, emotional about all of this, which they all are. And uh, to me, it was a blessing and an honor to be able to do that for them. Don't you feel that yes. way, too? Yes, it yeah. was. I mean, to think all these years that he's been not home, now he's back home. Right, right. And that's, that's uh, it doesn't matter who they are or what they what they done you know but he was still just a young man so so always keep them in your thoughts and prayers and and we'll continue on we've um, we've got a few things coming up not a lot because uh, we have uh, we don't do a lot in the summer I mean we do but this year we have kind of slacked off a little bit because we have such uh, small amount of boxes to right. send so but we're still fundraising we're still doing what we can so that we'll be prepared if we get another 50 names or we get a hundred names we never know right so we uh, we have Ames Day coming up that's in August I don't think we have anything in June do we not that I know of and then um, the end of July and the first part of August, uh, Jolene and I will be going to Minnesota for nationals. And that's real informative. Uh, a lot of people think if you're going to nationals, it's a big party. It's really no, not. No, it's not. <laughs> um, Four days of meetings, you yeah, know, sitting. Yeah, meetings, <coughs> getting dressed up to sit there all day. and. And of course, we get a lot of things accomplished. And if there's any changes, we get that done too. And we elect new officers. And you know, we've got several that's going out this year because you're only allowed to do two-year limit. So, so we'll be electing some new officers. But you know, they're all important. Yeah. They all do a job. Just like our third vice president, if it wasn't for her nationally then we'd be lost when it comes time to get a gold star right. flag or do what we have to do. So, And then we have our banquet that we get mm -hmm. to really dress up. Yeah, you yeah. Know. and that's always really nice. It is probably, probably the nicest time that we have yeah. at the convention. But, and we also have a Big Dipper yeah. uh, banquet which that is, if, if you're not familiar with the Blue Star Mothers, the Big Dipper is a fundraiser in itself. Right. Um, they're all Blue Star Mothers, but it uh, raises funds so that our veterans' children can apply for assistance for college, for uh, anything that they're doing with schooling. Right. It can be college, it could be a local school. Uh, sometimes we get them that's going to nursing school and all that but it's a point system so if you get that done through your point system then a lot of times you get uh, some money and it may be used on books it may be used on your transportation or whatever right. but again <coughs> you need to become a if you're a veteran uh, spouse or a veteran wife or a mother you can do that so so always think about it sometimes it affects your grandchildren yes so sometimes um, they need help with schooling and they can apply for this grant too so so we really are happy that we can do that and this year we're going to dress up as uh, uh, baseball. baseball teams yeah your favorite baseball team well I don't have a favorite baseball team but I have a favorite softball team. <laughs> and that would be my daughter who uh, is very big into softball. So instead of wearing a team, I'm going to wear a, base, or a softball mom t-shirt and a softball mom hat. What you wearing? <laughs> I don't know, I don't have a team, you know. I mean, I got a hat and a t-shirt that looks like a baseball it's a Blue Star Mother t-shirt that looks like baseball, but it's Blue Star Mothers, and probably wear my Blue Star hat, and that's my ball team. <laughs> That'll work, too. <laughs> we can make a ball team. Yeah. <laughs>
Can you see all of us older women out there yeah. hitting that ball? Boy, I bet we could still do it. We might have to walk the bases yeah. until we can hit the ball. <laughs> so anyway, moving on, <laughs> we, uh, we would like to invite anyone who has a son or a daughter who is serving, or if, you're, if you've raised a child, if you've adopted a child, or you was a foster mother and uh, all of that of military people you can join us and we would be more than happy to have you and sometimes you know these days you're raising your grandchildren so as a grandmother you can be a blue star mother so don't forget we need all the help that we can get yeah. and I'll tell you sometimes it seems like oh my gosh I don't want to volunteer for this I don't want to volunteer for that but you know it really makes you feel good when you get it done yeah I'm a grandmother that raised my grandson that mm -hmm. was army, right. which qualified me to be a Blue Star mother. Uh -huh. And it's been fun. Yeah. I mean, you work hard. You know, there's a lot of stuff as a because when you're an officer of the Blue Star mothers, you get a lot of chores. Like Jolene gets to do uh, book work, book work, and <laughs> finances and. I'm sure when she stepped into that job, she was not thinking that this was what she was going to do. And I really didn't want it, but I stepped up and took it anyway, you know. That's right. And she's <laughs> been doing that for how many years now? Six, seven, yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. It's kind of like, uh, you know, these small chapters, you just kind of keep doing it and doing it. So if y'all would like to be a part of this, please come and join us. <laughs> and uh, for... Everyone out there, I don't care if you're in the guards or the military, army, air force, marines, coast guard, you're all in our thoughts and prayers right. every day. We wish that you have a very safe tour wherever you're at and your families. We ask God every day to support you all and to be there for you all. And you know, uh, when you have a son or a daughter that's serving, it becomes your family. So even though my son's home, he's been home for a little bit, but you know, there's other sons and daughters and husbands and wives and grandchildren, whoever, we still care for them as if our own children was over there. I saw on Facebook where they, the ceremony where the National Guard come back Yes. And it brought back a lot of memories because I went to Fort, down to El Paso, Texas, mm -hmm. to Fort Bliss to welcome my grandson home. And mm -hmm. that's quite a ordeal, you it know, is. them marching in and it is and all that. And them dismissing them and them looking for their families. Uh -huh. It's very uh, emotional, as was our weekend. It was very emotional. But, you know, it's also emotional when they leave. And it's so happy, but the tears still run when yep. you come home. So anyway, we're about out of time. And if you see us out, stop and say hi. If you would like to leave a donation and we're not in our room, you can leave it at the train station at the mall. That would be security. And uh, they, they will make sure that we get whatever that you drop off. And just always remember our sons and daughters as they fight for our freedom. And um, if you're in the mall, then tell the, what is it, a few more days, they have a display for heroes. Oh, yes. That is very interesting, all different shapes of the military yes. and simulators and stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And the art that the children from school mm -hmm. had done for the veterans, and some of it's really good. Yeah. It was really hard judging some of right. them. But luckily this year, we didn't have to do the final. We just narrowed it down. So it, it was hard doing that yeah. too. But again, y'all, please continue to keep our country in your prayers and our military people. And I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful month. Have a good day. Hello, I'm Cliff Reporter of the Booker T. Washington Community Center, located at 800 South 5th Street. Please come out and visit us in some of our programs, and please watch for us on Community Talk. Hi, welcome back to Community Talk. I'm Letitia King. I'm here with Bob Osborne. 
He's going to talk to you guys about Aging with Grace conference that's coming up in June. Can you go ahead and tell us a little bit about what to expect? Right, and I want to say we're here today to represent RSVP, one of the finest organizations in Enid, and they're the ones that sponsors this Aging with Grace conference. We're just really excited to be a part of it, mm -hmm. and uh, it is coming up June 28th at the uh, Stride Bank Center. Okay. And so this is a, a really great event, and uh, I just want to encourage everyone in Enid to come. That sounds awesome. Um, what are the times for that for people who want to still attend? Okay, the um, doors are going to open at 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. and they're going to close at about 4 p.m., and it's going to be an action-packed day. Let me tell you, we've got a, a big array of speakers, and uh, we, at, right now we have about 33 booths that will be there representing all kinds of things dealing with senior services. Everything from financial to Grace Care will have a booth there to mm -hmm. talk about um, services we offer. There'll be, um, right now, like I said, there's 33 booths. Wow, that's awesome. Can you tell us about any of the speakers who are going to be um, attending? Right. I, uh, we're real excited about our speaker lineup this year. Um, the main keynote speaker is Dr. Germ Germaine Odenheimer. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a geriatric doctor specialized in uh, dementia and Alzheimer's and uh, she's going to be a great speaker for us. She uh, is going to be talking a uh, two times just before lunch and right after lunch. She'll be talking about um, misdiagnosis, how Alzheimer's and dementia is misdiagnosed mm -hmm. sometimes. And then also after lunch she's going to have a great uh, topic called Don't Touch My Keys. <laughs> And uh, everyone knows that, you know, all of us someday are going to have to give up our keys. Well, when mm -hmm. is the time to do that? So that, that's a great um, opportunity there, too. Right. That's good. Well, you mentioned lunch. What can they expect during that time? Oh, yeah. You get lunch, too, <laughs> on this deal. So um, uh, w the Stride Center does a great job, and they'll be putting on a baked potato and salad bar lunch. And I might mention that there is a cost to this. Um, mm -hmm. The tickets are on sale right now. You can get them at the Stride Center. You can get them online at the Stride Center also. You can get them from RSVP, which is on the corner of mm -hmm. O.N.K. Garrett and Van Buren. And you can get them at Grace Care there at 1909 West O.N.K. Garrett. Advanced tickets are $10. I mean, where can you go and, and have a good lunch for $10? Mm -hmm. you know? So it's a great if, you know, event. Uh, and then if you wait until the day of the event, then tickets are $15. So I encourage people okay. to go out and get your tickets now. Okay. And this is your second year to put on the Aging with Grace. Is this something you're wanting to continue to do? It is. Uh, real excited that um, last year was very successful, and this year it has just exploded off the charts with uh, interest and people wanting to come. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would encourage people to get your tickets early. There is a possibility that we would sell out of tickets. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we only got so much capacity and then we'd have to stop the ticket sales. Mm -hmm. um, it is something that we want to do every year. It, you know, Letitia, you, you know, at Grace Care, we get those calls mm -hmm. and people are frantic. They're, um, they've got a crisis going on. They, um, you know, this happened to mom, this happened to dad, what do we do? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the re reasons we came up with this conference was we wanted to try to, um, get people the information before they had a crisis. Okay. So some of the topics, uh, we've got a full scale, you know, a um, tremendous amount of uh, news in nowadays about people, uh, seniors, uh, someone coming in and ripping them off, you know, mm -hmm. uh, losing their finances. There's so many, there's so many schemes out there. And there's yeah. actually a really great uh, task force in Enid uh, headed up by the um, Mike Fields, the district attorney's office, to combat uh, fraud against seniors. And so he'll be speaking about that. Um, we've got uh, someone coming to speak about Medicare, Medicaid, mm -hmm. what you need to know. Um, misdiagnosis of dementia, I mentioned that one. Oh, this is a big one. We have a lot of veterans out there that um, uh, have benefits and they really don't know uh, how to access those benefits. Yes. We're gonna have right. people there that day to speak on um, veterans benefits and also we'll have people there to help you if you wanna start that application process, you wanna get the ball rolling to see 
if you qualify for those benefits, then we're going to be there to help you that day. Uh, going to have someone there to talk about wills and trust and power of attorneys and mm -hmm. advanced health care directives. You know, oh, uh, yes. <laughs> at Grace Care, we get those calls and, mm -hmm. well, wh what is this advanced directive? And do I keep it in my safe deposit box and yeah. where do I keep it? And what do we tell them? Not there. Nope, on the fridge. <laughs> on the fridge. That's where you want to keep yeah. your advanced directives and your DNRs and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, we're going to have someone talk about the effects of mental isolation. That is a huge topic nowadays mm -hmm. that um, people may not realize, but um, isolation, they say, is the equivalent of smoking several packs of cigarettes a day. That's, mm. It's so detrimental to their health that um, when people, um, you know, one of the things they're finding is that it leads to death, really. When they go back and yeah. look, it's never on a death certificate. This pe person died from uh, isolation. But when they go back and look at when did their health really fall off the mm -hmm. cliff is when they isolated. And we deal with that. We see oh, yeah. people that isolate and how important it is for them to, um, uh, you know, have some companionship, mm -hmm. some activities. Yeah, be able to get out of the home a little bit too. And Right. Yeah. And RSVP yeah. with their Meals and Wheels program, you know, is a great contact for a lot of those people. They're in the mm -hmm. homes. They get to... Um, uh, interact with those people and they're also great eyes for um, our task force on fraud because uh, where they've got the drivers going and delivering meals they might see something and one of the topics th this year they're going to be saying is if you see something suspicious with your elderly um, parents grandparents next door neighbors uh, say something you know mm -hmm. now that people may not have known uh, who to contact but with this task force then all the, there's a place for everyone to contact and help combat uh, this fraud. Yeah. Sounds hey. great. That sounds amazing. Now, who's your sponsors that you have um, for this, Adrian oh, with Grace? Great question. <laughs> uh, boy, we've got a lot of great sponsors this year. And it, this is a, you know, Enid is such a great community. I'm so excited that, um, of course, Grace Care, we wanted to be a sponsor mm -hmm. of it. Stride Bank Center. Greenbrier, Security National Bank, uh, Magby Transportation, St. Mary's, Comfort Keepers, Thrivent, OG&E are just some of our sponsors. Wow. And like I said, we've got 33 booths that day. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention was uh, who should attend this event. event. Mm -hmm. And if uh, this event is really for anyone that has an elderly uh, neighbor, uh, you've got parents, mm -hmm. um, loved ones, grandparents, whatever, and you want to know what's the community resources out there. You know, don't wait until uh, mom is falling and help, I can't yeah. get up. You know, uh, get that information now. Be proactive mm -hmm. with a little bit of planning. It takes so much stress off the family. Yes. And so we're excited to be able to put on this event and uh, would encourage everyone to come. Mm -hmm. June 28th, doors open at 8. The first speaker will be right at 9 o'clock. And I want to tell you, it's going to be fast-paced because we've got a lot of speakers. And um, I didn't mention, but we will have a lot of door prizes. So if you're one of those people that likes door prizes, come, get signed up, uh, get your tickets early, come that day, and really enjoy a, a fun day mm -hmm. of education. Well, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> well... I uh, <clears throat> wanted to remind people of the times again. It's June 28th, and uh, tickets $10 in advance, $15 mm -hmm. at the door. Again, pick, get your tickets at Grace Care at 1909 West Garriott or RSVP on the corner of uh, ONK Garriott and Van Buren or at the Stride Business Center. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> If your nonprofit group would like to be on Community Talk, give us a call at 540-8918.